first Liverpool Classic match. We have Liverpool versus AC Milan in the 2005 Champions League final in Istanbul. As you can see here, we have Liverpool set up in a back four, flat midfield four, and front two. AC Milan is set up in a back four, one holding midfielder, three midfielders, and two forwards. The biggest issue that was brought to Liverpool in the first half of the match when they were down 3-0 was that there was too much space behind the midfield line for AC Milan to find a ball into the two forwards, whether that be Gattuso in the midfielder, Andre Pirlo as the holding midfielder, Clarence Seerdorf as the left mid, or one of their fullbacks. When Liverpool were in possession of the ball, what we would see happen was one of the wide midfielders, whether that be Luis Garcia or Jean Arisa, would drop into the wide area. So they were the ones providing the width. The ball would get played out into the fullback, and then they would be looking for direct balls over the top into either one of the forwards, either Barros or Smicer, who came on for Kuhl 27 minutes into the match. The issue with this movement here for me was that as this ball got played in, it seemed a bit rushed. There weren't many numbers around the ball, and they were really trying to play off the fact that maybe this player could get in behind or win the second ball, but it was always, for the first half, a continuous switch of the ball through, whether that be through the back four or through the midfielder, out into the fullback. Again, wide midfielder providing width, and then looking for a direct ball in behind. It was one way of skipping these six players, but at the same time, when the ball would get played, there weren't numbers around the ball, which led to hectic play. When they would play this ball, if it was successful, yes, then they could move up the pitch, but it would be a lot of work on these three midfielders to move up and connect. And if they lost the ball, they were in a good shape, but it didn't provide any consistency in their possession play higher up the pitch. Where we saw the failings of Liverpool's four flat four with two up top, AC Milan would have been in a back four. They allowed their left back to push on. The other three slid over to make a back three. And in doing so, it allowed them to protect against the front two of Liverpool, attack the gap behind the front two with Andre Pirlo, and allow their three midfielders to sit more in the gaps. Kaká sitting between the center backs and the midfielders, Gattuso between the gap and the wide area, as well as Seydorf in the gap in the wide area. By doing this, they're able to find the ball into Pirlo much more consistently. He was able to pick out passes either into the front two with direct balls over to the top or through the midfield. They tactically switched to a back three, having Smicer providing the width on the right, John Arnorisa providing the width on the left, bring on Hanan to help Xavi Alonso attack this gap behind the back two, as well as either side of the attacking midfielder for AC Milan. This allowed Gerard to push up a little bit higher, Barros to be in his normal position, and then Garcia to be more central, which I thought was a good decision because it allowed him to be in a more threatening area versus in the wide area where he started. This tactical change caused multiple problems to AC Milan. One, in a four diamond two, you give up natural width, so they were able to find more options to switch the play from side to side higher up the pitch during the match. Now being higher up the pitch with their players, they were finding balls whipped in. And AC Milan did a decent job of defending, but it was something different that they had to tactically adjust to. For me, the turning point was Dudek's save on Shevchenko from the left corner early in the second half.